Well, hello folks, and thanks for taking the time to watch another episode of Little Boat Adventures. Um, you're joining us now, it's the end of April, and we've still a bit of boat work to do. We've been working hard over the last few weeks since the boat yard reopened. It had closed down again for a short period because of COVID restrictions. But um, we, we've had a lot going on. Kelly and I both work full time. And I've been doing a part-time um, course through work as well. So we haven't had a lot of time to produce any videos as well as kind of do boat work. So we've kind of sacrificed the videos in the meantime for all the projects we had going on. We've done a few. We've still a bit more to do. But we're hoping that we can still get the boat launched within the next week or two. Um, so that'll be early May. So that was just to give you a quick update. We'll jump back in videos now to um, just after we hauled out and the start of the boat projects. And we'll try and get caught up with the videos. So I um, hope you enjoy this next series of content. It's all to do with boat work in the, in the boat yard. Um, but there's some some interesting projects that we've, we've been doing. Um, so hopefully you'll find them interesting enough and stay tuned Uh, just back down to the boat yard today. This is the first I've been down from before Christmas. It's now going up pushing mid January. Um, we've just been busy with working things like that, so we haven't been able to get down. But um, we're going to start today's going to be the first of the projects that we had listed in a previous video. But before we get stuck into that, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who took the time to comment and leave really brilliant helpful suggestions on the episode where we talked about and um, the big plans for our little boat and um, the support and the advice and everything has been amazing so thank you thank you so much for that As you can see from what cleared out there just before Christmas, we've left it as a bit of a a bit of a building site. We've taken a lot of stuff out home so that it doesn't get covered in mould or damp. And um, we've just left a lot of tools for the, the work we'll be needing to do. So to prevent paralysis due to over analysis, that's a term that I've heard used, it speaks volumes to me. Um just where you have so much to do and you're overthinking everything that you actually end up doing nothing. And I've had that a few times. I've come down to the boat to do some boat work and, you know, you have that much in your head that you need to do that you end up going home and doing nothing. So um, that, that speaks volumes to me. So to prevent paralysis from over analysis, I'm going to make a list of things to do in order of what I think is priority. And we'll start off with below anything below the waterline hull and keel repairs we'll look at that crack on with that kind of work and then we'll work our way actually up um around the hull and then into the boat and the deck so that's the plan we'll, we'll get the the bottom of the boat done the hull all the outside and then um we'll we'll work our way up and into the boat so we've, we've a lot of jobs to do. Some are refit, some are repairs, and some are upgrades. So um, there's plenty to keep us busy. Time's gonna go quick, I feel, because like I say, it's already early January, so we've only a few months and we've a lot of things to do. So this through hole is, our through hole is 
very close to the transom just near the midline so I'll get in to the rear cockpit locker and see if I can find out where that goes to or comes from and this one no idea I'm not sure where that one goes to this isn't working so I'm just going to re remove it we have a plug here a drain, some our bilge drain plug that comes out every time we haul out and goes back in every time we go back in and here's some areas where we missed last year because the stands were in the way and we just get, didn't get an opportunity to scrape and prime and amplify these little areas so that's on the to-do list and then this paddle wheel for the speed log doesn't work the depth gauge as you may have seen is on it's reading but I think it's only a matter of time before it gives up it's on one of those old um, instrument units so I'm going to replace the depth and the speed log with a new NMEA um, system so that everything kind of works in harmony that's the idea but goodness knows what will happen with my electrical skills and through hole here is for the intake and outtake for the head and output for the sink in the galley and that's the intake for the engine the strainer for that um, so here's our first port of call with the repairs it's you can see down there there's a chip taken out of the front of the keel there just where we kind of nudged a rock on the day we launched back in the summer so I'm going to take the grinder to it here and open it up a bit and have a look and see how to go about repairing it So what I've done is just ground it back to the fiberglass and what I'll do then is sand back a bit further with just a normal sander um, to take it back a bit further and I'm going to do a repair like we did with the rudder and um, using some chap strand wrong using some milled glass fibre and epoxy and um, we'll be able to do the repair on that okay so I actually just need to have a look and see that I've got some supply of epoxy <laughs> Well I think that's the the sanding and grinding back to give it a nice smooth um, a nice smooth area and there's no kind of sharp rigid edges for when I get ready to lay up the, the glass. So what I'll do now is give it a, a wipe down with some 
acetone give the area a good clean and then we'll mix up some epoxy and we'll, we'll just put a, a fine layer over just to prep the surface and then we'll mix up some unthickened epoxy but then we'll put in some milled glass fibre blend and that will be the, the base of our repair just using a little drop of acetone So I've cut two sections there. It's probably a bit overkill because although we've we've ground out a larger area, the repair area is smaller. So there we go. So I'll just measure up quickly. So what I'm just doing here is mixing up some of the milled glass fiber into the epoxy and once it was all wetted out I just took some and pushed it into the, the little cavity underneath by hand and that was just the easiest way to do it because there's no way I could get any kind of um, anything in below there to try and put it into place and then for the second part of it I just put the milled glass fibre and epoxy onto some peel ply and then what we did was just push it up around the keel and the peel ply would hold it in place and help it to conform with the shape of the keel and it was just the peel ply was then just taped in place and we just kind of used our hands to work the milled glass fibre into the, the crack and then left it to cure overnight. it up a bit better with the tape and the peel ply it's the epoxy soaked through the peel ply now so that should hold it in place while I adjust it and tape it back on properly it's not going to be perfect finish but because the damage was down to fiberglass I didn't want to and I don't think it's recommended that you just kind of put filler on that and sand it back and cover it I think you just need to build it up again with new epoxy and glass on the exposed fiberglass and that's why I had sanded the edges back so I had more of a bonding surface on the keel of the fiberglass exposed fiberglass I think that will turn out okay once it's cured and we take it off we can rough it up and if we need to repeat the process we can but there should be enough build up on there that we can um, sand it sand it fur and then apply a fur and compound well it's the next day 
we're back down to have a look at our repair and remove the peel ply and see how it's looking. So in my opinion, this is a good, solid repair. The cavity bit at the bottom that we tried to fix um, just hasn't been such a good job. I can still feel there's a, quite a bit of a cavity there, so I think it was just awkward to get to that the other day. So... I'll come back and I'll repeat the process just down at the bottom here and try and fill that out a bit better with with some of the milled glass fibre and epoxy but I'll not bother very on it because you've seen that kind of process but what I'll do is I'll take the sander to this area and smooth it all out and then that should be ready um, once the other part of the repair is done and tidied up that will all be ready for some furring and then painting but yeah, I'm impressed. That's good, solid repair there. Thanks again for watching guys. We really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. For other ways to support our channel and the production of these videos, there are some links in the description below.